Hey, what's going on you guys? Welcome back to another episode of Thy Trek. If you haven't been here before, what we like to do is take a look at the most interesting and creepy TikToks and kind of evaluate for ourselves whether these are facts or fake. Before we get into it, go ahead and smash the like button, smash that subscribe button, and uh, let's just go ahead and get right into it. Rich Americans owned such high-tech houses more than 100 years ago. This rare video taken in 1922 records real scenes in the homes of wealthy Americans. It's ultra-modern design concept and various high-tech household equipment. It's simply beyond ordinary people's imagination. What appears in the shot is a private home elevator. You know, this was more than 100 years ago. Many countries don't even know what an elevator is. This bookcase is also equipped with a telescopic robotic arm, seeing a man pressing the button on the table. At this time, the robotic arm will push out the desired books, although not very practical, but it was very advanced for that era. What is even more exaggerated is that there is actually a remote-controlled bathtub hidden in the bedroom. As the man pressed the remote control on the wall, the bathtub follows the track below to reach the bed, and when the man finished using it, the bathtub will also automatically return to the place where it was placed. As the man flips the switch, the bed placed in the bedroom was stored away. This not only greatly saves floor space, the most important thing is that the bed will not get wet when taking a bath. When the man walked out of the room with a rich man, the man flipped a switch at the door. The door quickly closed tightly. Then it continued to fluctuate. The door was quickly opened again. Then the two of them came to the billiards room. Men and wealthy men leisurely play billiards in front of the camera. These billiards that have been punched into the hole will travel up a pipeline on their own, thus automatically collected. And when this game is over, just press the switch lightly. The telescopic rod will automatically organize the billiard ball into a triangle shape. This allows you to quickly start the next round. At noon, as the small wall at the back of the restaurant is opened, a small train came in carrying delicacies prepared by the maid. It's so convenient. After the rich enjoy the delicacies, the little train comes in again. Then it carried the plates one by one along the track back to the kitchen. At this time, after getting the plate, the maid in the kitchen just put those dirty dishes on the conveyor belt. The conveyor belt will then automatically move the plates to the automatic dishwasher for cleaning. After watching this video, what do you think? Me personally, I'm not buying it. I mean, the fact that they said it was scenes leads me to believe that it was set up like a show or something like that. I don't know. Let me know what you guys think in the comments. I know so many people that have gone to Mexico and gone to these clinics and done one Ibogaine session for 24 hours and come out of it a totally different person. A complete new perspective on even why they were using whatever they were using in the first place. Not only does it help eliminate the addictive properties and the connection that your body has to those substances, but it also allows you to re-examine why you went down that road in the first place. Yeah, there is a sort of pharmaceutical push to develop non-psychedelic derivatives of Ibogaine that would retain the anti-addictive properties, which sounds like a good idea in theory. So they created this drug called 18MC, and it wasn't psychedelic, but then it lacked some of these neurotrophic factor releasing properties of Ibogaine. But the, really the bottom line is that we shouldn't deny the fact that the psychedelic activity of these substances is therapeutic, psychotherapeutic in and of itself. I don't know, it sounds like a game changer. Thank <laughs> you. 
Have you ever heard of the forbidden secrets of the Vatican exorcist and demon? In 2010, Reverend Gabriel Amorte made a shocking accusation that he believed the devil resided in the Vatican itself. The Reverend was 85 years old in 2010, and for 25 years before that, he was the Vatican's main exorcist, a position that most people may not realize. For all those years, Gabriel Amorte treated 70,000 cases of demonic possession, which is a staggering and incredible number. He holds people with ropes tied to their beds, then recites prayers to expel demonic entities from their bodies. It was a big shock, because one would think that with so much exorcism, we would hear something about it in the news. However, his demonic possessions were almost completely stifled by the church. Most people had never even heard of the official association of exorcists, a club of priests charged with the mission of defeating the devil. According to Gabriella Morte, in an interview with the Italian newspaper La Repubblica, the devil is invincible, explaining that the devil can be hidden, speak many different languages, and can sometimes transform spiritual objects requires six or seven assistants. Just to keep the possessed man in bed, while he vomits nails and shards of glass. About the devil in the Vatican, the priest said that evidence is everywhere. He looks well, though he does not mention any names. He says that the work of the devil is evident Pour Vatican. profiter d'autres faits intrigants à bonne foi. Cardinals have no faith in Jesus Christ. Bishops have alliances with Satan and all evil and corrupt races within the walls of the Vatican itself. Now to enjoy other intriguing facts, Subscribe. Yeah, I've heard a lot about the exorcism, so he actually might be on to something. They won two million dollars by cheating at roulette using a completely legal technique. You're about to see, it's truly brilliant. In 2004, a Hungarian woman and two Serbian men walked into the Ritz Casino in London with a clear intent to rake it in. They had with them a cell phone fitted with a laser scanner and linked to a mini computer. This device gauged the speed of the ball its drop point on the roulette and the roulette spin speed. After the analysis, the computer gave them a span of six numbers where they were almost certain the ball would land. Players are allowed to place their bets on the table as long as the roulette hasn't made three full spins. All they had to do then was quickly place their bets on these six numbers. Thanks to this method, they pocketed the equivalent of $145,000 on the first night and returned the next day to cash in a whopping $2 million. Naturally, the casino filed a complaint, but the regulations only prohibited meddling with the roulette's physical mechanics or touching the ball. Thus, the three cheats were able to keep their winnings. Such a technique is impossible to replicate in the United States, since the law bans the use of any equipment in casinos that could compromise the element of chance. I was, I was just about to say, in America, that's called cheating. But uh, shouts out to them for finding a way around it. Is it truly possible that there is a network of tunnels underneath our feet that the elite use for human trafficking? Now remember, Maria Farmer said that Epstein had tunnels in all of his residences because he himself told her. Let's go back to his infamous island for a second. The Daily Mail reported that $100,000 worth of cement was rushed to his house just weeks before his arrest. He was also on the advisory board of Lifeboat Foundation, a company specializing in safeguarding humanity, which hosts programs such as Life Shield Bunkers. Hello. Hi, is this Lifeboat Foundation? Yes. Yeah which are massive house-sized underground living spaces. No, we don't have any actual bunkers. It was just an idea by one of our board members. So we have like 
one page devoted to it on our site. It's not even like a primary goal of our organization. Our primary goal is to pr protect humanity against existential risk. So you have it up on the website to look at, but it doesn't exist. Mm, okay. There's a video on the internet that's got everyone talking. It was shared by a Reddit user named no underscore adagio 6743. A lot of people online are discussing and wondering if it's showing something real or if it might be just a trick. The video begins with what looks like a regular day out on a boat. Someone is using their phone to film the water and the surroundings in Ontario, Canada. It seems like a regular, fun day on the boat. But as the video continues, things take a surprising turn, and what happens next has left everyone guessing. Watch this. Oh yeah, that was Bigfoot. And if that ain't Bigfoot, I don't know what is. Reptilians. The reptilians are an ancient biblical race and even Satan is a reptilian. This is why he is known as the serpent. Reptilians look like humanoid reptile-like beings, possessing slit pupils and ranging from green to white. The white-skinned reptilians are the highest class reptilians. I believe this is the kind of reptilian Satan was because he is regarded as a very high-class angelic reptilian aka a serpent or dragon and these white-skinned reptilians are known to have wings unlike the lower-class reptilians which don't have wings. Reptilians are an advanced class of angels that have shape-shifting abilities which they accomplish through either holographic technology or by means of vibrational hypnosis in which they can manipulate the human mind to see them as a human being outwardly. Some of these beings even genetically alter themselves to appear more human. When these beings were sent to Earth, many believe they went underground in the inner Earth. While others believe that they are among us now in their shape-shifted human form manipulating society. Proof that these beings' shape-shifting abilities are biblical is because the Bible says that Satan can shape-shift into an angel of light. The reptilians are a part of a planned planet takeover known as the New World Order. This is a secret planned infiltration with the ultimate goal of controlling all of human society which they will fail due to humans being protected by God and much more powerful angelic races that we will touch on in another video. Do you believe in time travel? At 11.25 p.m. on June 15, 1950, visitors in Times Square, New York noticed a peculiar man around 30 years old, dressed in an odd outfit believed to be popular during the reign of Queen Victoria nearly 100 years prior. He seemed extremely confused, like a lost person, constantly staring at the bustling cars passing by. Suddenly, a large car rushed towards him, causing his immediate death. Upon examination, investigators found a series of unusual and bizarre items on this man, including a letter sent to Philadelphia in 1876, 70 old dollars that had been discontinued, and a personal business card with the name Rudolph Fence. The most puzzling thing was that all these items were very new and showed no signs of decay, even though they were at least 80 years old. After searching through missing persons records, the police finally found the daughter of Rudolf Fence, who was then 80 years old. She recounted that in 1876, her father, then only 29 years old, mysteriously disappeared while on his way to mail a letter. Afterwards, all investigators were stunned into silence upon learning that every description from age and appearance to clothing of her father completely matched with that peculiar... I mean, there's so many cases of this time traveling. I mean, there has to be something to it. Okay, I came across this video today and I wanted to show it to you guys. It's a very strange video by the looks of it. It looks like these people could be in India, but the whole video is about this group of people finding these creatures and trying to capture them. I don't know what to think about this video, but I want you guys to tell me what you guys think, of course. You guys are always right. If you like my content, don't forget to follow, like, and share. Let's check out the video. Oh, 
से भी कुछ चमक रहे यार क्या है यार वो यार जानवर की पता नहीं हिल ही नहीं रहा वो एक ही जगह खड़ा है and they ain't nothing human about that i was going to say those are just humans but uh, there's nothing human about that Yeah, that escalated uh, pretty fast. My condolences to anybody in Mayor's Beach that had to go through that. What a shock. He was able to calmly eat steak underwater. This is a true image taken 100 years ago at 30 meters underwater. He claimed to come from the underwater world. According to his description, there is another human world under the sea, although living in the ocean. But the speed of development is no different from that of terrestrial humans. Journalists naturally won't believe such words. So he started verifying. He infiltrated the seabed in front of numerous journalists. I thought it would come out in about a minute. It wasn't until the photographer followed with an oxygen mask that he realized he was playing the violin. At this point, he has been underwater for 5 minutes, but judging from his expression, he still remained calm and composed. According to Guinness records, the longest diving man in the world persevered for 20 minutes. Maybe he's just good at diving, just as the reporters were still questioning. He started eating underwater. From the floating spoon, it can be seen that this is indeed underwater. He cut the beef with a knife and put it in his mouth. You should know that eating like this underwater inevitably leads to water being consumed in the stomach together. But he doesn't seem to have inhaled water. It looks very relaxed, and the most crucial thing is, he seems to be able to see the underwater world clearly. You should know that ordinary people can't even open their eyes when entering the water without goggles, even if it's open. The view of the underwater world is blurry. It's very difficult to send meat pieces into the mouth without distinction. Eat a few pieces of beef. He still appears very calm. At this point, it has been underwater for more than 10 minutes. Does he really not need oxygen? This is obviously not in line with common sense. According to his description, their skin can filter out water and absorb oxygen. That's why they can stay underwater for a long time. What do you think about this? I think that that man wasn't human. I think he was exactly what he said he was. And uh I don't know of any humans that can eat steak and drink wine underwater like the way he did. What we've come to learn. The grays can make blonde bodies and reptile bodies and project themselves into the blondes of the reptiles. The reptiles can make blondes and gray bodies and project themselves into the blonde and the gray bodies. The blondes can make the reptilian bodies and the gray bodies and project themselves into it. And he said, "Linda, what I've just said to you is the key to the history of this planet. Right. That the competing extraterrestrials can camouflage as each other's enemies right and that hello 
and welcome back to Celebrities You Didn't Know Were Kidnapped. So this is actually one of the scariest celebrity kidnapping stories I've ever heard. Today we're talking about Justin Long. This story takes place in 2007 when Justin was filming a movie in Birmingham, Alabama. Justin was out at a local bar after filming with some of the crew when he was approached by two local men. The men offered to take Justin and the production assistants to a casino, but insisted that they all drive together in their car. Justin actually didn't think much of this and agreed to go with them, but first wanted to go back to his hotel room to get some more money to gamble with. So he goes, grabs the money, gets back in the car with the guys, and the guys say that they need to make a pit stop at their house. And while they're at the house, one of them offers Justin some weed, and he takes one hit and realizes it's not weed. He starts immediately feeling like he's losing control of his body, and when he offers it back to the men, they don't want to smoke it. And it's at this point too that another man comes out of one of the rooms, goes, that's the guy, grab the camera, and then they're all back in the car again. At this point, Justin's at least with it enough to know that they're not bringing him back to his hotel even though he's begging them to. At one point, they actually drive him to the hotel but don't let him get out and then drive away from it, sort of to like taunt him or to try to calm him down or something. He knows that things are starting to look really dire and gets this overwhelming sense that he is going to die. So what he does next is he opens the car door going 30 miles an hour and jumps out of it. And actually he's so clumsy as he does it, he falls under the car and the car runs over his leg. But he's actually able to still get up and flag down the next car that drives by, which just happened to be a cab. The PAs that he was with were also let go at this point and to this day he has nerve damage but obviously it could have been so much worse. Make sure you're following along for more in this series. Well it's clear that Justin didn't have any kind of street smarts. There was a lot of red flags I noticed right off the top so I'm sure he learned a lot of lessons that day. Of tri-state area investors say they were victims of a Ponzi scheme losing six figures each in what they thought was a legitimate real estate deal. News 12 senior investigative reporter Walt Kane has this Kane in your corner investigation. I was happy to be a part of something, especially something this big. Stanley Acosta thought it was his chance to give his family a better life. He invested $150,000 in cash in a real estate development deal. The money was supposed to be used to flip this property in Patterson. But Stanley says almost as soon as he signed the deal, something felt wrong. One of the biggest flags for me was he didn't count the cash. Um, I'm giving you $150,000 in cash. You're going to want to make sure that every dollar is there. The developer was Cesar Pena, a social media influencer who advertises real estate seminars. Stanley's contract promised, in return for his $150,000 investment, he'd get $45,000 in interest, a 30% return in just five months. But nearly a year later, he hasn't seen any money and says Pena has stopped returning messages. From a financial standpoint, it's killed me completely. Um, I've had to take out loans to pay off credit card debts. And Stanley isn't alone. Kane in Your Corner has uncovered over a dozen lawsuits filed by people who say they invested with Pena and never got the money they were promised. I was texting him like almost every other day, like, hey, what's up with the money? So he's like, I need that money, bro. Like, constantly texting him, texting him, texting him. He keeps delaying, delaying. Our investigation finds in some cases Pena sold investments in properties real estate records show he never owned or sold years earlier. The lawsuits already total close to $10 million, with more being filed every week. For the last year and a half or more, it's just been taking money in from people and, and there's been no, no likelihood of people getting their money back. Some of the lawsuits also mention Rashawn Casey. He's a radio personality who goes by the name DJ Envy. Casey often appeared with Pena at real estate seminars, but his attorney insists he's a victim too. And DJ Envy also um, gave $500,000 as an investment, uh, which he has not uh, received back. Yeah. Pena's attorney declined to be interviewed, but in a letter to the court, he complains about the tactics he says some investors are using. He writes, my clients need time to first protect their family from threats of death, rape, and physical harm. After that, he writes, they need to make serious and complex decisions as to how to move forward and what attorney or attorneys to move forward with. As for Stanley Acosta, he just hopes he and his family get some of their money back. If I had an opportunity to say something to Caesar and his family, it would be to just uh, do right by the victims. The SEC says before you invest money in any business deal, have an attorney review the contract.
And beware of anyone who guarantees high profits, especially if they also say there's little to no risk involved. In your corner, I'm Walt Kane, News 12. I heard Big Worm say, when you play with my money, you play with my emotions. And if it sounds too good to be true, 10 times out of 10, it is. I don't care if it's a business deal or if it's a person. They go, I would say, am I out of my body? Where am I? And they, they just laugh. They go, <laughs> and I thought, are they laughing at me? But they never, they never saw their faces. It was like a hood over them. But I could always see their robes and the golden rope that was wrapped around them. And I knew it was gold. You could feel it. I don't know how to explain it, but you could feel everything. You could feel the textures of the clothing in a different way. So when it all happened, you know, after that, I went into the hospital. I was out. But when they pulled the gurdy out of the ambulance and it hit the, you know, the, the road, it jerked me back into my body. And I was back in. Now, I'm I'm in pain. I'm, in, I'm a total afraid because you're back into your body real strongly. And I remember as I was going down, I could see all the lights going through the hallway. You know, they take me into the ER. And I thought, this is just like uh, the hospitals that they show on TV when they're on the gutter and they're running them down. Oh, this is exactly like that. So it was just a different kind. You didn't have an understanding. But yet you had an understanding. And then my friends came in and I didn't talk to them. I just would do, you know, with my eyes. And then I remember going in. This is what the nurses got because I'm on the floor. I'm on the table. Now, my doctor that came in, he uh, bent down to me and he had a pencil in his pocket and he bent down and the pen dropped. There's no way I could have seen that pen. There's no way I was laying down. So I saw the pit, but I also I saw his Kohan shoes. And I used to wear Kohan shoes and they're three hundred dollars a player. And the first thing I asked when I woke up from there, I said, do I have to pay for those shoes? Because he didn't put his little booties on. And the nurse went, how do you know that? I said, I saw it. And he lost his pen and you all didn't even pick it up. And she went, oh, my gosh. You know what I told them after I learned all this? I said, you all need to go in the ER and put some pictures or something up at the top. It says, you're not in your body. Go back in your body. I said, and people will feel that. And they said, you are serious. I said, yeah, I'm serious. I said, you need to tell them because you've got to get them back in the body if you're going to try to heal them because they're not going to hear words. So when nurses and doctors heard that, I had several really good friends who were nurses and they came in and they, they wanted to talk to me. How do I know when they're out of body? It's not hard to tell because if you really understand it, because I've been watching it for so long, you see them float back up. And then if you put them back down, that's why they start crying. And so it hurts to go back in your body. And that all of that experience woke me up for five years. After that, Jesus came to me after 18 months. Now, when you say Jesus, Jesus was, I was raised as a Baptist and I went back into being a Catholic because my father died when I was 16, watching him die from the age of 11. So I have a lot of experience about death as a child. And this is why I was told that that was why I had to go over. <laughs> That's one of those clips where she was dropping a lot of information, but I definitely need more because uh, it was a little bit all over the place. But um, I kind of get the gist of where, you know, where her headspace was. Well, you guys, hey, that's another one in the books. I appreciate every single one of you guys for stopping by and watching another one with me. If you haven't already, go ahead and smash that like button, smash that subscribe button. Go ahead and join the iTrack fam and I will definitely catch you on the next one.